Hey guys, it's Ross Scott, known as Fancy Couch Site. We're joined by C3PO, although you probably don't recognise him because of the red arm, because we're going to be reviewing this, which, after having had in my possession for about a year, I finally managed to finish. Although, once I started reading it a few days ago, I just ripped right through it. I am C3PO by Anthony Daniels. There he is. And there he is. Thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, it's his memories of being on the Star Wars movies, of course, uh, stuff like that. So it's like there's a bit about, um, and there's a picture of it as well, his appointment with George Lucas, you know, um, for that initial interview. And how he wasn't interested at all, really. Oh, getting a bit too excited in front of child here. There you go, you go back there. But seeing the painting of C-3PO, the one in the desert with him coming towards you, that really changed his mind. And there's loads about all of the trials and tribulations he went through with the fitting of this costume because it was pretty um, low-tech back in the day, covered in plaster, all that sort of stuff. Not very dignified at all. And of course, very uncomfortable as well. Kind of like the Stormtrooper armour, you know, so every time he was doing like this, it was biting into him. And the costume was always falling to pieces as well in the first movie. It does develop over time. And by the time of the Rise of Skywalker, it was like basically the best C-3PO outfit he'd ever had. Where the hands actually worked properly the first time ever. But yes, thoroughly enjoyed. Um, <clears throat> lots of um, like some little vignettes in here. Like um, on the first day of shooting in Tunisia, him and Mark Hamill are in the car from the hotel to the location. And he sees a dead dog just lying by the side of the road, collecting sand and flies. And um, when he's filming The Rise of Skywalker, the same thing happens, although obviously it's a different country. Um, he sees another dead dog and he considers it a good omen. <coughs> Other things like, I didn't know that him and Kenny Baker, who played R2-D2, did not get on at all. It doesn't really go into the details as to why. I suspect it's just a personality fact. He certainly, Anthony Daniels, felt very hard done by that he felt like his role as C-3PO was sidelined, you know, and said, oh, he just voiced it because they wanted to make out as an actual robot, which obviously in the late 1970s, that has not been for at all. But yeah, he did feel like he got hard done by and um, his achievement and his performance wasn't given the credit that it deserved. And so I always enjoyed his performance as C-3PO. He is C-3PO, but yes, that is something that preyed on him quite a lot. And over time, that did change. And obviously, in The Rise of Skywalker, he probably got the best C-3PO that we've ever had. He was an integral part of the plot, and it was great to see him in action. As dazed and confused as he was when he gets his memory rewiped. But yes, thoroughly enjoyable. Other things like, um, obviously, he does a... Um, the droids do the uh, appearance in Rogue One very briefly. It mentions about that and meeting Gareth Edwards and all that sort of stuff. And then he was going to, or he does cameo in Solo, a Star Wars story, not as this guy, of course, but as one of the background saves in the Kessel Run. And he went to the set the day before Lord and Miller got fired. So meeting everybody, everybody's very nice and all that sort of stuff. Supposed to come back, I think, the next day for filming. Gets pushed back. I don't know how long. It was several weeks, I think, that the production was shut down for while they retooled it and saw where they were at with the footage that they had. But yes, it did not go smoothly. Um, he was supposed to come back the next day, and it was months later. Loads of great stories like that. Um, and also, let's show you some pics and stuff. So there you see that appointment that he had with George Lucas, and that is the painting. Um, it's, it's such a great painting, of course. And that was the sticker that was on the script. So let's see what else have we got various parts of the casting process obviously the first midriff where he is there and there is the sculpture obviously it's based on uh, the robot from future uh, future off yeah metropolis there he is in the desert more scenes from there various greeblies it also mentions about all the different merch involving c3po some are less dignified than others like toilet roll holders all that sort of thing. C-3PO's um, cereal instead of Cheerios. I think there's a picture of that in here somewhere as well. More shots of him. And there's just some more of the interior. Uh oh, bends and some more of the script. Uh, 
Oh yes, and he also played that droid that you see in the background. And uh, he was there. And you also see it, uh, I think, isn't it like in... Oh, in with all the other junk as the Jawas, or it might be in Jabba's palace in the background, I'm not sure. Some more People magazine. <laughs> there is his Big Bird, the Muppets. I remember that episode so well, I'd love to see it again. Also mentions about the holiday special and how everyone's like, what is this? <laughs> There's bits more there. This um, was going to be in Return of the Jedi. They come off the Falcon onto Tatooine and there's a sandstorm. That was a fake sandstorm, but um, that scene was cut. There's just bits, his hands. And other stuff. But yes, yeah, so it's thoroughly enjoyable. Really enjoyed seeing, reading through all of this, his perspective on it, and for the new films as well, of course. Um, my understanding is that he also was um, not so happy with The Last Jedi. Like, him and Mark Hamill couldn't believe that in Ryan's script, Mark would, uh, Luke Skywalker would just walk past c 3 at the end on Crate. He might get to at least give him a wink. Uh, this, and I always thought he puppeted um, that in The Phantom Menace, but from reading this, it's more like um, he just voiced it um, and someone else puppeted it. And in the second one, he was going to pop it, or he did pop it, the bare frame, but that scene was cut, and we only see C-3PO fully clad. So that was a surprise for me. I didn't know that. I always thought he was the puppet master, as it were, of the uh, robot, the naked one. And there's just some more picked up in there. Uh, and uh, one of his background roles in um, Revenge of the Sith, and there he is in the outfit, the battered one, just stuffed here as well so much green screen and because C-3PO's visage his eyes are very limited he was always bumping into things falling over and you just, you've always seen video clips of it so it is hilarious but very undignified more of the merch and this is a plane because obviously for the Force Awakens there was a BB-8 plane an R2 plane and a 3PO plane of all different airways we've got a model of it from the airline there is the table read of the Force Awakens and I'm not sure what that is from Oh, it's Ryan Johnson, so it must be The Last Jedi. And there, some more pics. And there he is. Other stuff. And this one is from The Rise of Skywalker, of course, when they're overlooking the Death Star on Kef Deer. And there's just some other production pics from that, too. So, yes, thoroughly enjoyed. Um... I've now got to get through um, Carrie Fisher's Princess Diaries, I think they were called, which I've had for even longer than I've had this one and made no progress on. I think I had that since she passed away. It was like four years ago now. So that one I shall have to crack on with. But there you go, guys. Just my thoughts on I Am C-3PO by Anthony Daniels. Thoroughly enjoyed. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this commentary. Leave me a comment or suggestion for a comment topic you'd like to see discussed or like the video.